<laughs> hey method yeah first half of the stream is gonna be dedicated to the seats uh, of the charger we have i mean first half first let's say half an hour and then uh, we move on to the sierra uh, i have already made uh, measurements for the sierra uh, let me uh, let me post you a link so, link number one, and link number two. I've done some research, so um, okay. And of course, Christian, uh, a viewer, has um, basically he has designed a seat mechanism that I like very much. Um, I'm going to try to post some pictures. Come on. Uh, Okay. Okay. For example, uh, he used a part that I don't have, unfortunately. Uh, so we cannot do it today. But the seat is actually very interesting so yeah since i don't have the part and i really like the solution um let's say we don't work on the seats and we actually do work on the sierra because i really want to work on the sierra because yeah the charger you know in my mind the charger is already done um we need still need to work on work on it but yeah um Okay, let me just open up the, the file with the numbers. Where is the file with the numbers? I just linked it to it. Um, <laughs> this is the blueprint. No, oh, the, ah, that's the wrong file. That's the Photoshop file. That's not what I wanted. Oh, well. Ah, oh, that's what I wanted. Copy Dropbox link. There. That's what I wanted. Yeah. That's what I wanted. So, I made... Oh, opened again the wrong file. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> okay. Okay, so if you open the, the last link I uh, posted, you will see a few measurements that I did and the text file uh, in the other link uh, shows you a few calculations that I made. Um, so you will see there are uh, two, uh, since I didn't find better blueprints, uh, I just had to go with what I got. So uh, one of the blueprints is showing um, the side view has a different scaling factor than the uh, front and back view. Not by much, but enough that it matters. So um, the width and the height uh, from the side view are different than... Uh, so the, the height is different on the side view than in the front view. Uh, the width I approximated from the side from the front view and from the actual dimensions um, from the specifications. So we got that right, and then I kind of eyeballed the other figures. So until we get better blueprints, this is what we are basically stuck with. Um, so, why is this so dark? 
Come on. Yeah, okay. The camera doesn't do metering very well. Yeah, okay. So. Um, first order of business, we have to uh, think about the suspension, front suspension. Uh, original Sierra suspension requires us, I mean, it would require us to have um, the anti-roll bar is actually part of the triangle here uh, for, for the A-arm. So the anti-roll bar would, I don't know, it would fit somewhere in here and it would form the triangle to locate, you know, the uh, upper wishbone. But we cannot kind of we kind of cannot do that simply because um in the charger the original uh, ball joint uh was locked was um attached the way we attached it on the car so it was the ball joint was on the other side so it, this was inverted and uh, the force of uh of the wheel going up was acting on this and uh, this couldn't detach. Now in the real car, of course, this is not an issue, but if we do add the anti roll bar here, what's gonna happen is that we are going to dislocate uh, the ball joint. This is something we do not want. So, um, we are going to, I mean, we have to, uh, do this slightly differently. Um, so we we are going to have um, like in in a race car uh, because in race cars in uh, in rally cars uh, they usually detach the anti roll bar. So many rally cars because of the stiff suspension do not utilize anti roll bars. Um, and we are going to make a triangle here. At the bottom, slightly different than than stock, um, and we are going to add an extra anti roll bar, and the anti roll bar will connect directly to the hub. So since our hub is very compact, this is playing into our hands, uh, and we can make it work really nicely. Uh, so it would be basically a link. You know, a link like in many cars today, uh, and it would attach to the anti roll bar here, and it will attach to the hub here, so it will act directly on the hub, and it can rotate with the with the wheel, no problem. Uh, and we're just gonna make uh, this uh, triangle somehow. I don't know how yet because we need the, the space in the front here uh, because here in the front is, on, is going to be the steering rack steering rack so we cannot have any suspension component components uh, beyond this point beyond this point we have just steering uh, so everything regarding anti roll bars uh, triangles is going to be behind the wheel that's uh, the plan. I also thought about the uh, the layout here. So uh, what you're gonna try to do is um, we're gonna try to do, to maximize the space uh, inside the engine bay. So we're gonna move this one step further out, and we're basically gonna have the the frame rails are gonna be are gonna be like like this, you know. And then uh, we are going to have the, where's another frame, uh, let's take this one. We're going to have a frame here and um, frame rails here, you know, so that uh, we maximize the width that we have available here uh, in the engine bay. So the frame rates are relatively low in the engine bay. Uh, the strut towers 
because this is going to be destructors are basically the only thing that's going to uh, be uh, in our way. Uh, we're going to do the inner fenders with uh, panels, so they are going to curve out so that the space inside the engine bay is going to be as big as possible. Because obviously we want a detailed engine bay in the Sierra. Uh, we need uh, room for the engine. It's going to have a turbo um, intake manifold, uh, you know, all of the, the stuff. I, I want it here because we have the room um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. So today uh, I think we should do the suspension bridge since we know how this goes um, We must do the suspension bridge. So first of all, uh, we need to figure out how to do the triangles here uh, so that uh, the wheel once it's on See uh, it must not hit the triangle Which is gonna be a challenge of course I mean, we, it's maybe going to be a triangle or, I don't know, something else. Let's consult the, the pictures uh, to see, um, see what we can do. Um, why is this not opening? Come on. Really? Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So, if we take a look at this picture here. Okay. Uh, so, this is basically the uh, picture of the suspension that I'm, I was talking about. Uh, you can clearly see that uh, there's nothing in front of the suspension bridge other than the steering. The... Um, Front is located with, uh, well, the A-arms, I mean A-arms, just arms. And then the uh, anti-roll bar uh, is forming the uh, rear part of the uh, triangle. As I explained, not going to happen with us. Uh, the anti-roll bar is going to be where it is in the Sierra on the picture. Only that... Uh, in our case, it's not going to be actuated by the uh, A-arm. I mean, this twig or whatever you want to call it. Because that's... Can ha that can happen. Um, yeah. So we need to figure out how to basically locate this. So that this doesn't happen. So we need a triangular uh, structure here. That's going to clear... The enter roll bar basically it's going it should go over the enter roll bar um, and uh, locate it I don't know somehow triangularly so we prevent this from happening uh, how we are going to do this I don't know yet but let's uh, let's see um, let me take a closer look at the Sierra suspension because um, if we look closely, if we look closely at this picture, we can see that the A arms are actually. This may be good or not. I mean, it's gonna be the cause of some slight bump steer, I, I suspect. But we are going to do it anyway, uh, because I see a potential here that the A arms are basically in 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 two uh, two, two planes um, let me let me show you what I mean um, ah. so we have this guy oversized of course because that's what we have um have like uh, it's gonna be like this and let me just see if you can see it okay yeah so we have uh, the 
twig in two planes, the way I see it on the picture, if, if you're following me. Uh, so somewhere here is the big yellow uh, uh, polyurethane bushing, and then it goes, you know, in, in the real card, and then it goes, you know, come on, ah, of course. Really? Okay. There. And so, and then it goes back to the uh, enter rule bar. But this is something way too complex for us to replicate here. Because, you know, you can see clearly that, that everything is a little bent and, you know, we cannot replicate the shape. Um, we probably can uh, do uh, the two-step thing. And the two-step thing is exactly what is going to, going to allow us to uh, make the triangular shape uh, to the back. Uh, because the, the enter row bar is going to be in the same plane as the, uh, this lower part. And the suspension bridge is going to attach to, to this here. Uh, and the triangular shape is gonna basically go in in this plane back uh, just a second I need to open the door for the cat what Oh my god, the cat doesn't, wa doesn't know what he wants. Okay. Um, right. So, um, we need to do a lot here uh, in a very small space. Mm. I'm just looking at, um, you know, looking at... Uh, uh, this and uh, trying to figure out what we are going to do uh, yeah leave, leave him yeah yeah JSP just rub it in just rub it in you and sauna um, okay how do we do that I wonder I mean, you can clearly see here, uh, here, that uh, the entire roll bar makes room for the wheel when it, uh, it's gonna turn. Why are you torturing me? You and your saunas. Damn it. Uh, so, if we look at this. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, what in the fuck? You just fell off the bench. Let me do this real tight. Real tight. That's slightly better. Okay. Looking at the picture. Mm. It's... Hey, Christian. Um, you're just in time. Don't worry. How do we do that? Okay. I mean, we need to keep in mind that 
we need to prepare to to design this for full drop okay but if we take a look at at this so let's say that this is the suspension at full drop then we have a lot more room a lot more room um, okay uh, what I want to check here I want to check here what exactly the diagonal here is okay so the difference here is not big it's almost negligible so we can get away with it um, it's gonna be some difference but you know nobody's gonna feel or see it uh, so we can get away with it um, yeah and I would like to I would like to create something it's gonna attach here form this and allow me to have another uh, something go to the back um, so what options do we have No. Would that fit? No, it wouldn't fit. No, it wouldn't fit. Doesn't matter. I I was th for a brief moment. I was thinking of. Uh, Um, no, this is exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Um, this is exactly what we're going to do. Hold on. So, um, one of my ideas would be to use these guys and on the suspension bridge we could use these i am not sure if this would work um, or how it would work we could even use this on the suspension bridge Yeah, this would give us plenty, plenty of room with this, and it's thin, which is exactly what I want. It's thin, and it's go it's not gonna interfere with the steering. This is exactly what I want. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, let's take a deep breath here, uh, because um, this is the moment where we might go into parts modification, okay? Uh, the reason for parts modification is this. So, the steering link here is six studs long. Uh, now that we uh, are thinking of... Um, Bionicle stuff uh, Things uh, are starting to get Complicated, let's say Okay So uh, obviously if we Make it like this 
this is going to be way too short. And for the scale that we are making, if, if you imagine that this is our suspension bridge, so the, the width that we have, uh, we have this guy is here. Uh, let's take another one. Okay, and this guy is here. Now we have this here and this here. Come on. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, fine. Just imagine it. Just imagine it, okay. So these are relatively short. And one problem with this is even if we make it like this, the problem here is you see, this is gonna interfere. So if we make this one slot longer, this is gonna be perfectly fine. Uh, the problem here is that suddenly, uh, this is seven studs long, not six. So it would require us to make the steering link seven studs long. Uh, one option is to make the steering link uh, bionical, but this option is relatively difficult because we don't have a lot of room in the wheel hub so if we take a look at our wheel hub let's put this briefly together um, you will see that here in the front the room for bionicle stuff is very, very limited it's limited to the point to the point that we cannot have it here. Um, okay, what? A ball joint with axle hole. Put an axle through it, then put axle for axle connector in between. Put one of those system brick system brick ball joint to rod parts. No, no, no. that's. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, keep in mind that we want to make the steering rack as compact as possible as well. Uh, so some trickery is going to happen with the steering rack as well, which we're probably going to thread new, new grounds there um, to keep everything as small and minimalistic as possible. Um, now, now you see, if we went with, with a four-wheel drive Sierra version, this would make things even more complicated than they are already are going to be. So in an Audi Quattro, this would be perfectly manageable. Here, not so much. So who the fuck is now messaging me on Facebook? I hope it's one of you. No, it's not. Uh, just a second. Okay. Um, so if we used um, this normal uh, thing here, we would have, I guess, you know, we would have room here. This would be manageable. Of course, it needs to be connected on this plane here. I have ideas how to do it. I mean, ideas. It's, yeah, it has to be here. Uh, 
exactly here. I think. Hey Marco. Uh, no, not much. Not much is going on yet. Just thinking. And of course, the another parts modification would be necessary here. Let me just see if I have an, uh, an already modified part for this. Just a second. Uh, I think I do. Obviously, it's, a, it's an old part, I don't have an emotional connection to it, so we're going to modify it like this. There we go, the deed is done. And we're gonna use this guy here. Always the same. I don't know what's wrong with me today. So, it would be here. Doesn't interfere with anything here. It's a very, very nice. Uh, uh, very nice lever and you will notice of course that it's in front in front of this knuckle so we are going to get a perfect Ackerman geometry because of this this is all thanks to those wheels that allow us to have this inset but the only the only problem that we can have here is that of course the wheel is rubbing the wheel is rubbing on this of course it is i mean it it's just enough that it's rubbing which makes this useless <sighs> we could have this closer Uh, by using um, by using this, but this brings an, a whole nother problem. Uh, come on. Okay, I need to take a new ball joint. This brings up a whole different kind of problem. So if we have this guy here, we are not gonna get rubbing, but you can clearly see the problem. This is not gonna be good. So there are solutions. There are solutions, but all require us to modify parts. That's how it is. I mean, um, for this, we need to make this guy uh, with a three connector. Yeah, I know the hub is going to interfere with the connector. Uh, but, uh, you know, if we have a three number three connector here, you know, if 
we use a number three connector here and wait for it i do have i should have a few of these ready that are modified and can be repurposed i think let's see which ones are not glued okay this one's glued this one is not glued okay so let's say that we that we use this guy here the number three connector Okay, this one's glued as well. Okay, it doesn't matter for demonstration purposes. Okay, so if we now use this guy, now we have the room. You know? This, by the way, is how uh, engineers in uh, real cars do it as well. You know? Many cars have, you know, the the steering knuckle here is kind of bent. It has uh, various shapes exactly for this purpose, to clear obstructions here. So if we mount the wheel we mount the wheel. Yeah. Now we get problems on the other side of course we do yeah of course that would be expected so a uh, plates on the other on on just one side you mean uh, n no triangles here no uh, it has to be here Otherwise, this is not gonna work. It's gonna if, if it's just just on the on one side, it's gonna fall apart. So um, no, I cannot go without it. Sadly. Um, yeah. So one other option would be, of course, that we. Um, That we put the steering link here. Here. And here it would be okay. At full drop it would be uh, interfering. You know. So at, at full drop of the suspension, we would not be able to um, steer, which is not good because this is exactly uh, where uh, the outer wheel uh, is. Uh, no, wait, the outer, the inner wheel is, which is unloaded in the, in the corner and we don't want this to happen. Uh, Yeah, so we don't want this to happen, but perhaps we could go here uh, with uh, the distance that we used before. So we could have a one and a half studs here. We could have one and a half studs here. Uh, of course, uh, we would need to cut, cut a three stud uh, axle which I happen to have already pre-cut just so we can try it. Mm -hmm. do I? Yeah, I do. Okay. It's from my uh, 
modified axle collection which is there for exactly these purposes okay so It's maybe a, a tiny bit too short, but it'll do. It'll do. Okay. Yeah. So this, this would go perfectly. Come on, just a tiny bit there. Okay. Uh, let's see what the wheel says yeah the wheel um oh my god it's oh. can you see this it's it's clearing the connector by oh wait maybe yeah it's clearing the connector by a goat's hair it's just clearing it so it is clearing it but really, really, really uh, just. So this would be, this would be doable, yeah. This would be doable. But the problem here is, you know, ah, there's no problem. I was afraid, ah, sorry. I was afraid that this would be uh, a bit high, but no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So this would be an option here for the steering link. This would be absolutely an option. Uh, my preferred option, of course, would be if it, the steering link would be one step further in the wheel. Uh, does does Ackerman mean the wheel turns turns one way one way more? Yeah, 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 that's the thing. The the wheel on the inside needs to turn a slightly slight a tiny bit more than the outside wheel because the um, inner wheel describes a smaller circle than the outside uh, wheel. Uh, this isn't super, you know, super important uh with what we're doing but it's kind of nice to have you know the Sierra is kind of the car that um, that maybe should have it but it's probably gonna have it no matter what uh, because uh, you know uh, even though you see even though uh, these are on the same plane uh, so even though wait let's let me fix okay even though these are on the same axle axis uh, when viewed from below and the thing is that you have to consider if viewed from the front if viewed from the front and if you if you consider the kingpin axle so the kingpin axle goes here uh, goes here and through I don't know if you can see it here and through the lower ball joint this guy here and the steering knuckle is slightly outside of this axle it's hard to see on this maybe 
and I don't have enough hands to show you uh, all. Um, but this guy is clearly on the outside of this axle. So as long as, as this is outside of the kingpin angle, king, kingpin axles, we're gonna have um, Ackerman steering, doesn't matter what. That's, that's the golden rule. So the steering link, if it's in the front of the, of the axle, which it is in our case, uh, has to be uh, further outside of the wheel uh, than the steering axis, if this makes sense. Uh, if, if it would be here in the, if it would be, if this would be uh, behind the, the axles, uh, the steering link would have to be further inside. So it would be probably have to be one stud further inside. Uh, to have a true kingpin. Uh, it's not always possible, of course. I never had Mecklenburger Weiss beer. Uh, I do like Weiss beer, so um, Weiss beer, huh? uh, but um, I never tried Mecklenburger Weiss beer. So I have no opinion on it. Um, okay, I would prefer to have unmodified parts, of course. Let, let's be clear. I would prefer to have unmodified parts on, on our car. That's my preferred uh, option. Um, it's uh, probably not gonna happen. Probably not gonna happen. Because, simply because we need to make this a six stud long uh, affair. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we could do a six start with these, no, no, probably not, this is longer, this, is, this would be an eight stud pair, yeah. Uh, we cannot win this. Obviously, I mean, then we cannot do this uh, with the ball joint. Okay. Okay. I mean, just throwing out ideas. Um, this would be perfect because simply because. Uh, if we had it like this, uh, we would we would not have to have anything here in the front to hold the suspension bridge up, and we would be able to directly mount the steering uh, column here. I mean, steering uh, rack here. That would be perfect. Um, but if we have it any other way, then we have to have basically, you know something like this and then uh, this guy here in the middle and then the steering column as this is this uh, the steering columns the, the steering rack uh, decisions 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 uh, okay there's there's one more option there's one more option that's Probably not even bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we could have. We could have. This setup like this. If we do it like this. This would be a six stud. And we could mount this six stud here. Not it's not this is not entirely the way uh, Ford has it. Huh? Ford ha Ford Ford would have have it here, so the the uh, well the border and the, the bushing would be here. Uh, but you know we have to take some liberties, I guess. And of course we need to prevent uh, it from uh, well we have to make it a triangle. Which we can. Very simple. 
which we can make very simple. Um, let me show you. I hope this works. Otherwise, I'm just gonna embarrass myself. But it it's, it it has a, the potential of working. Come on. So the idea here would be that we would basically make this, you know, a double ball joint affair. Maybe it's gonna work, maybe it's not. Essentially, my hope here would be This is of course the mount to the chassis and this is, oh yeah, this would be a failure, doesn't matter. Um, come on, oh yeah, um, no, we need this. This and this and this would be here. And now we need to double up this. Basically, like this. Um, first, I'm going to do just uh, just this one because I want to see if the wheel actually clears it if not then I'm not even gonna continue then we're gonna do something else so see something like this this is very very strong even though it doesn't look like it but you know the forces that would require this to dislocate um, and I think this is, yeah, I mean, obviously you can dislocate it, but you know, um, obviously this needs to be, yeah, let's, let's combine this together because this is, this is ridiculous. Um, let's see. Obviously, yeah, we need to think of something here, uh, but it's all manageable. Okay, okay. yeah, so um, this would be our steering link. I'm um, uh, steering link. Um, lower ball joint mm. and of course i built it for the wrong side because of course i did uh. okay okay yeah okay bear with me here I'm an old man. Sometimes I just struggle with stuff that's obvious. Did 
There we go. Just turn this around. There. Okay, now we're on the correct side. Now we delete this and remove this. Add this. Delete this. Uh, let's see, where are we? Where are we? This. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Okay. Here we are. Just. Uh, huh. Let me just put this in just so I can hold it there. Okay. So this is. Is it? No. Crap. Obviously, we need to be one stud further out. Of course we need to do. Uh, of course we need to be one step further out. Yeah. Okay, but now we're correct, right? Yeah. Now we are. Now we are approximately where we need to be. There. Okay. So you can clearly see that we have a lot of room here for the steering rack in front of the front axle which is good okay and now let's see if uh, we have enough room for this to steer okay we don't so unfortunately this guy I mean the, the, the steering angle is not bad. No? But it needs to be more. It's it's not enough. So we need to clear this one start here. Uh, something needs to be re-engineered here. Um Okay. Just so we know. Good to know. Um, you mean here? I could, and I lose room here. Then I lose room here in the front. That's uh, the problem. See, if I do this, let's let's do it. Let's do it. If I do this. We are going to lose two studs. Keep in mind, we are going to lose two studs. So, like this, right? I agree, this is very sturdy. This is very sturdy. But let me show you what the problem is. Maybe I'm over exaggerating and it's gonna be fine. Um, could be. There's always the possibility that that's uh, the case. Okay, so. Are we there? No. We need to be here. Yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, now uh, we have lo just lost the room for the steering rack. That's the concern. So, steering.
steering rack should be here against this but because of the ball here it cannot and of course we have no way of mounting the steering rack here because this is already so far in the front that's that's the concern that I had that that's why I wanted uh, it to be further back yes of course it solves now the the problem with uh, with this and I like how sturdy this is but uh, if we want to keep this then we need to solve this problem so let's let's think about it because let, let me show you what uh, what the problem here is um, steering rack ideally we would have a steering rack like this I think we can use, use this steering rack six I think I think and um, I'm gonna make my life a little a little bit easier here by using this. Yeah. So it's located. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay. So I would use the steering rack. Um oh wait. So, I mean, we do have half a stud, you know, half a stud, we can, we can put it half a stud further away, so it clears, so it clears the board vent. That wouldn't be too bad. Of course, we're gonna have to adjust stuff here in, in uh, this plane somehow. But this is manageable. What do you mean if I can angle the lower arm? Don't quite understand. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you know, I would have this like that so it would be you know slightly this thing would be slightly angled inwards uh, with this axle with end stops and some two stones have rims yeah we we go this is just uh preliminary I, I we're just experimenting with geometry um we're just experimenting with geometry uh, so don't worry too much about this. This is just um, like we always do, just fooling around. I, I'm not sure how to do this yet. Uh, I'm not sure how to do any of this yet. We are just experimenting. Maybe we're gonna ditch this entirely and do something else. Um, Maybe we'll do something else, yeah. But maybe not. Because at this point, you know, uh, it would, if we use uh, the setup like we have here, yes, it's interesting. 
but we could also use something completely different. I mean, the way we have it here, we could as well uh, use this, you know. We could just as well use this, and then we would not have the problem with the ball joints. Um, yes, the I mean, the ball joints here solve, uh, kind of solve uh, the thing with the steering with this, because I don't think, uh, I, I cannot imagine a scenario where the force on the uh, wheel will be uh, that great that it's gonna uh, disconnect this. Because you know you have to have quite quite a jolt here. Before before this is gonna happen, before this is gonna happen, the wheel is gonna you know bump uh, and uh, and the other problem here is that the bionicle joints create a lot of friction. So um, I'm probably gonna. Um, Just a second. B boss is writing something. Just a second. Um, okay, uh, job related stuff. Um, we are working 24 hours a day, so sorry. Uh, hey, Yannick. Uh, okay, so we gonna we are going to ditch um, this simply because there's uh, too much friction, uh, and we we are also going to make it um, e more easily removable. Because the real car uh, has this, there, there's like a bolt in here, and uh, we are gonna probably use, you know, our favorite connectors here. If I just can put an axle through the lower arm instead of the bionicle joint, no. See, uh, just like we discussed with the charger, uh, we do not use axles in pinholes. Why do we not use axles in pill holes? Because they have slack. We do not want slack. There are occasions where this is permissible, but certainly not here. So this is definitely one, uh, one of these uh, places where this is absolutely not permissible. And uh, in this case, I would basically do the following. Uh, let me just connect. Okay, what we would do here? So instead of this, we would basically we would go with this okay so this would be removable it does not have the friction of the uh, bionicle stuff uh, and where's the steering rack and we can have the steering rack uh, running uh, close 
as close to it as possible. And another bonus. Um, just a second. Let me find the part. Uh, uh, what really? Seems like I have used all of them in the charger. Maybe I have some one of them. Yeah, I have one of them running uh, around here, uh, lying around here. So and then we use a part like this. You know. Well, maybe not, or maybe we do something similar, uh, and have you know the steering rack. Uh, maybe we can use this just as a guide for the steering rack to run, you know, here. Um, just an idea, of course. Of course, we do need to triangulate this uh, somehow, or, you know, make part of this uh, connect somewhere here. Mm so that uh, we don't get these, uh, this movement. Um, and I'm looking at the, the blueprint that, I mean the blueprint, the, the picture that we have here. Let me uh, post it again, because some of you were not here before. So uh, this picture here, this picture here uh, is uh, a picture of Okay, and for example, oh, let me find a better picture. Uh, yeah, this picture. And this picture here. Okay, so um, maybe we can have um, We can have, well, something like this again, and then we can have uh, a point here where the this stuff connects to the body or to the suspension bridge, to be more precise. So if we have the suspension bridge done like this, I mean the suspension bridge, the suspension here, Done like this. This is already sturdy. And we have um, just a second. Well, technically, technically, we can have this here, and we would have this here okay so these two would then both connect to um, to the frame rails okay they would connect to the frame rails and the steering axis the way I see it uh, the steering axis would go here Now this is this is interesting. Where where are we placing the steering axis? We are placing it. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, the steering uh, gear that would turn the turn the the whole thing is going to go through here. It's probably gonna be this. Okay. And we would have our steering rack here. So I would prefer uh, to have the uh, CV joint or the carton joint uh, go here. So if we place this here uh, and I find a carton joint, for example, this one, and let's see something. Yeah, so this angle is way too steep, 
for the card and joint. If this was, was one stud further away, that would be nice. But it's not. See? Ideally, I would have this then go to, to the steering rack. So this would be as low as possible. It, it would not interfere with the engine in any way because it would ba basically be as far on the side of the engine bay as possible, like in the real car. Um, but then we have to basically um, create something different for this uh, for this part. Um, and this is interesting. Since keep in mind that we need to run an anti roll bar here somewhere. So the enter roll bar would be, I don't know, enter roll bar would be, where is the four, number four connector? Um, it was here somewhere, I think. Ah, let's take the another fiber. Another fiber. Um, I don't have one. No, here it is. Yeah number four connector um, and let's say that our um, see this is why I need to clean up my desk earlier because I'm just looking for parts that if they were in their uh, rightful place uh, I would know where they are but here I don't because they're all over the desk okay so um, <clears throat> let's take another of those links so the anti row bar would be something like this I don't know it it cannot be here of course because this is uh, interfering ideally it would be somewhere here But we have this here. Now, what are our options here? I wonder. There are a few options that we have. One of them in involves us doing this. So we would have We would have our steering, I mean, our uh, A-arm done like this. Not my favorite solution, of course, because uh, it's not going to be modular or removable, let's say. Because now I'm basically, there, I'm basically fixating it, it to, the, to the suspension bridge. Uh, it's semi immovable, uh, but I, I still want to triangle, triangle, triangulate it to the back. However, this gives, gives me the freedom of having the anti roll bar here. Okay, then the anti roll bar connects here to the, it connects here to the suspension. So I, I'm just leaving it here. Um, but then I need to triangulate this to the back somehow. I mean, to the back somewhere, uh, preferably behind the the anti roll bar, or maybe in the, uh, into the same um, into the same um, bracket that's gonna that the anti roll bar is gonna sit in. Just so when the jolt comes from the front that the arm cannot be pushed uh, backwards. We don't care about uh, the fact that when we drive backwards, this can move a little bit. That's not important. We just are interested in uh, our A arm not being able to be pushed uh, to the back when, uh, some, when the wheel hits a bump. Yeah. 
uh, that's uh, our primary concern here. Um, and this can be, you know, since in the original car, um, uh, this is a bushing basically, or our bushing here. This can turn, doesn't matter. It can turn. So if it can, it can be an axle. It can be an axle. So if it can turn and it can be an axle, we can do the following. We can do the following. Just let me let me think a little bit before I do anything that's not possible to do. Um, ideally, we would have you know we would have it here the our uh, connector uh, thingy. We would have it here. And we can, we can have it here. We can have it here. So we can absolutely have it here like this. Now let's see. Um, Damn it. Uh, we are not gonna have it here. Okay. Change of plan again, because I just realized that we have to have it one step further out. There. There. Why do I keep doing this? Okay. So, yeah. The problem here is if we have something here, let's say it, it's this. Um, okay. And okay, we triangulate it. This, for now, uh, uh, this attachment point is not interesting to us. We just need to see if this uh, even clears everything. Uh, so, we, we basically clear it here, but then we try to steer. And we cannot steer. Because this is suddenly bumping into this and we are unable to steer okay we are unable to steer but then we think about the charger and the way we have it in the charger, and suddenly things look a little bit better. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I'm just gonna put the wheel on to see what the approximate problem is. Yeah. Again, it interferes. 
So ideally it would be out here, but it cannot be. Cannot be out here because it's gonna interfere. If if this would be a better ball joint or a better um, CV joint and it would have more uh, steering angle, this would not be a problem, but it's not. Let's try with the other one. So naturally, we do have this guy. Sorry about that. Okay. So we have this guy here. Not sure how this is going to work on this side, but you know, we're going to try it. And this guy has more promise because it's angling a little bit more. And we don't care. We don't care if if it can turn because that's not uh, not important. It's not gonna turn. Okay. So suddenly, suddenly this is clearing. I mean, the steering angle that we have here is quite extreme. If we look from below quite extreme and that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty much what we want yeah of course uh, on the other side here we can use whatever we want we can attach it I don't know just something that's gonna fit I don't know what's gonna fit yet but something's gonna fit uh, we are gonna know this when we do the framers so I just want to have the option. So now I can rest in peace because I know I know that when I I uh, brace it here, basically I can even feel how uh, when I brace it here on the chassis, it's gonna transfer transfer all the force that's coming here to the chassis via, via this. So it's going to be just the way uh, I want it. Ideally, this would be like in the rear car and this would be the anti-roll bar as well. But since um, this is not a rear car, uh, this is not going to happen. Because if we do this as an anti-roll bar, um, this ball joint is going to pop out constantly. And this is not something I want to deal with. And I think you agree with me. This is not something we want to deal with. And of course, I'm gonna do this on this side. Like this, since now we have solved this. And suddenly this is removable. And it's modular. Which is what you want. And the next good thing is, now we have our carlin joint here, which has no obstructions now and can go to the steering rack. Um, now, this would be all well and good, um, and it's gonna be all well and good, because the uh, steering joint, uh, steering um, Axle on the other side, let's simulate it here. So the steering axle on the other side is going to be the same, but it's not going to have a current joint. Rather, it's going to be an axle going basically uh, just uh, along with the frame wheels, and uh, it's going to end uh, at the point where uh, we're going to have the hand of God steering. And then it's gonna just, you know, go uh, up the uh, uh, cardan um, shaft, oh, basically the tunnel, and then up to the roof. 
that's the plan. So much simpler than in the charger. Uh, it's not gonna go through the uh, dashboard at all. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more direct. Um, and I suspect the steering is gonna be a much, 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 much lighter than in the charger. It's, it, it should be really uh, direct. So yeah, uh, uh, unfortunately, of course, it's in the same plane as this, but this is not really a problem since uh, this guy here needs to end. It needs to attach to the body exactly where these two intersect. So the frame wheel is gonna be somewhere here and this needs to attach here. So it's not gonna interfere with this. And we are going to make the anti roll bar in a way that it either goes below or above this. So it's, they are not gonna uh, be in each other's way. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. And I think uh, it's gonna look almost like uh, like uh, Sierra uh, front suspension. Almost, not quite, but you know, we have to make some compromises because um, this, ideally we would have the, uh, uh, the link uh, turned around like in the charger but we can't because there's just no room here if we uh, turn this around uh, this ball joint would be uh, one step higher it would basically be just one step lower than in the charger and i think that would be too high for the sierra that would, uh, I think, not be in line with how the Sierra suspension works. I think. Yeah, and another problem that would result from this, uh, the more important problem, I mean, we, we could probably live with this being uh, on the other side, but the other problem is if we have the ball joint uh, uh, basically here, and we attach this guy here, then it's not gonna basically be a suspension because this guy has will constantly bump into this and we are not gonna be able to have a suspension. Except then if we raise this, but then we destroy the whole con concept of this simple uh, wheel hub and that's you know, we have to raise this, which is gonna create problems on top. So it's not that simple, you know. It's simpler to have the uh, anti roll bar separate, live with slight in inaccuracy in, uh, in the suspension geometry, uh, in the suspension layout, but I think we can all live with that. I hope so, I can. Okay. So, uh, now that we have this, uh, let's create uh, a mock-up of, um, of the frame rail with the uh, strut tower uh, and then we can uh, see what kind of steering, uh, steering rack attachment we can make. So that's, that's now the next problem. So this is solved. And um, now we have to mount the suspension bridge to whatever we are going to make here and see uh, how far out the everything can be. Yeah. Mm. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, how did we do this? I forgot. Was it like that? Yeah, I think it was like that. But now we can ditch this. We can ditch this. There 
we go. Let's eyeball this for now. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but it is. Look at that. Okay, yeah. So, this is semi-good. Or is it? No. This needs to be one step further out, I think. I think. Okay. Uh, I want to make my life as easy as possible. For now, just when I I need to find out the the correct uh, place for this. Hey mechanic. Sup. Okay. No. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That that's that's more accurate. It we had too much camber before. Now we just have to decide how much drop we are uh, gonna have. When the suspension is unloaded so this is the unloaded suspension at the moment and if i do this this is the loaded suspension so at full 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 fully loaded let's see yeah that's okay even fully loaded we are not scraping the suspension bridge uh, on the bottom which is okay yeah I, sus I suspect the most of the time the car is gonna sit something like this so the the lower arm is gonna be about parallel with, uh, with the ground like this and then you know when it when it bumps in it's gonna be like this I think that's gonna be acceptable I guess or should we go higher I mean we could go one step higher but that's quite a drop that's unrealistic I don't think how much this is gonna uh, depress when when we uh, Put some weight on it. How much weight we put on it? But I guess um, we can then um, we can then play uh, with the um, basically with a top strut. So uh, with the strut mount, uh, if we, if we if we raise it or lower it, you know what I mean. Uh, we can always adjust the height of the car because this is a McPherson and um, it's easy, relatively easy to, to adjust the height of it, uh, not by the spring, but by just uh, raising or lowering the mount on top. So this is probably what we're going to do. Of course, we need to change this anyway because um, the hood here is going to... Sorry. The hood hood line is gonna go like this, of course. So we need to 
to make this part lower anyway. Um, so yeah, but this is not important to us right now. Uh, we are uh, on a mission to do the steering, uh, the steering rack. So. Let's see. Let us see. This is Satrium Floralandia. Hey, oh my God! I had to, I had to uh, look at your nickname for a while to kind of get it. Okay. So, oh, come on. Okay. So with our with our camber uh, camber caster, this is too much. This is too much. So we need to go first of all. We need to go one step further in, and we probably have to use an eight stud, uh, uh, eight tooth gear, eight tooth gear. And with the 8 tooth gear, it looks just about right, but not quite. Not quite, still. This still isn't right. It looks even worse on camera than in real life. And I'm trying to hold this as parallel as possible, yeah. We are still gonna get bumps here. Still gonna have bumps, bumps there. So since we need to address this uh, this part anyway, oh, I did. Uh, glad to hear it. Uh, did I send you uh, the wheel hubs by any chance? So this would be, yeah, the position of this of of this would be right, okay. But we need to adjust things for the um, caster. So ideally, we would have a, a twelfth tooth gear here. And we would uh, change the position of this. So the position of this would be changed. Maybe by half a stud. Well, maybe pro most likely by half a stud. Um, which we are going to accomplish by using this. Using this. And hopefully we can get away without using modified parts. That would be ideal. Uh, so we would basically use this guy here, like that, and it would be placed here. Now we just need to think of a way to make this happen. So we would need one, two, three. Okay, I can, well, not three, but yeah. I somehow just fear that this guy is gonna bump into the wheel. And the wheel is, yeah, it's gonna bump into the wheel because it's not gonna allow us to do this. 
Shit. That's not good. And if I do it like this, um, yeah, I can. Shit, I cannot win this. You know what the problem is? Here, the since the this wheel um, has a five. Uh, five stud um, radius where we can do some shenanigans. At the, in the very center, we can have uh, five and a half studs, uh, five and a half studs, six studs. Uh, so half a stud more on each side. So, um, which uh, which our contraption here fits into just. No, it just fits as we uh, saw. But if we have anything else than uh, anything else here, here we can we have we can have just um, just one stud stud, which does not help us much because we need to raise the ball joint here. We need to raise the ball joint, ball joint here by half a stud. That's a problem. Uh, even, even if we use a modif modif modified parts, you know, like heavily modified parts, this is not going to be an elegant solution. So we would need to, to move this up by half a stop which we can't we simply can't uh, no uh, I'm not considering this at all okay that's completely out of the question we, we are not placing this behind the steer the, the, the wheel axis it's it has to be in the front like it's on the real car and because if it's in the front everything is gonna feel a lot tighter as well there is a solution just like with everything we did so far in the charger and here there is a solution for everything we just need to put our mind to it it's probably staring us uh, in the face we're just not seeing it. Um, no, the Lego crankshaft pieces do allow you to do some things with by half a stud, but they're not gonna help us here because this is neat. Th this is gonna have to be very uh, stiff, very sturdy. Um, There is a solution here. Um, look, I mean, this is the problem. See, this needs to be half a stud higher up, but we have very little room to play with. And I know there is a solution. 
I am not seeing it in this particular moment. But it is there. See, these are the, the moments um, that are not stream um, appropriate, no, not appropriate, um, that people don't want to see on the stream. So I'm just looking at this and I could be looking at this for half an hour and, and go through all of the iterations of parts that would fit or maybe, maybe wouldn't fit here um, before I arrive at some weird solution. So we do want the steering knuckle to be here where it is. Only one only half a stat higher. Because uh, doing anything here so if we would uh, lower this by half a stat we would have to you know all of this would be would have to be completely different. It would basic. I mean, the suspect the the since we already have a modified part here, we would have to heavily modify the suspension bridge. It would not be as simple as it will be now. That's the problem. You mean this guy? want to try something and see how much this interferes with the wheels okay this interferes a lot yeah this interferes a lot light gray which one this one this one this one because this one is modified this one is already modified and it's basically um, not really fitting and not what we want we tried this before um, in the logo of the stream so it's Right on the lower of the stream. This one, you mean?
Okay, where is it? I'm holding still, just guide me. So left and away. There's nothing there. Um, I don't know which part you mean. Uh, just, uh, you know, just uh, find the a brickling number and post it here in the stream and I'm going to look at look look it up in uh, in brickling this would be the easiest way and the quickest so we don't waste uh, everybody's time hmm okay so be, while you are uh, th searching for the brickling part number I'm just uh, thinking, um, thinking here for myself. Um, yeah, we do. I agree. We do need a better system for this. Um, but I think I might have. I might have a solution. I might have a solution here. I might have a solution. I am not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to try. Okay, it's not rubbing anywhere yet. Let's see if it's rubbing when I put this on. It's not rubbing. It's not rubbing. Okay, very good, very good. This is very sturdy, by the way. Okay. So. I'm gonna fix this um, with uh, a lift arm because I want to see uh, if this is bump steery or not. If it's bump steery, I'm not gonna be happy. If it's not bump steery, I'm gonna be very happy. Let's see. Okay, see, per perfect parallel, 
uh, we do have we do have of course um, a problem because it's a slight toe in but that's not really a problem because we can just basically move the entire steering axis a little bit out so that it's perfectly parallel see and then uh, the toe in that we have now when we move the steering axis out when we move the steering axis out the toe in that's present here is gonna disappear okay let's see let's see if there's pump steer no there is no bump steer i cannot see it there is no bump steer whatsoever and i am very happy so uh our uh our steering setup ladies and gentlemen our steering setup uh since this way, of course, uh, we have toe in. We are gonna move this accordingly uh, out by one stud so that this is gonna be parallel. But not quite. We're gonna use uh, move it out by half a stud so we do have slight toe in. You know? Because we do want a very slight toe in because when the car is driving along uh, the wheels are going to naturally be pushed out and since we have the Ackerman geometry we are going to have Ackerman steering regardless of uh, the fact that the wheels are at a slight toe in so okay let's see 6553 rickling number Six five five three. Uh, Brickling. Where is Brickling? I have so many videos or and stuff opened here. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, so five, five, six, five, five, three. Six five five three. Yeah, the, the pole reverser handle. Uh, we're not gonna use that. We are not gonna use that. Okay. Yeah, we are gonna have Ackerman here. As I explained before, uh, this point here uh, is actually uh, on the outside. Of the steering axle if it was on the inside axle of the steering axle we would not have Ackerman but it, since it's on the outside and the uh, steering uh, rack is in the front of the wheel axle all is well so this is all perfectly fine so now let's see about the steering rack uh, let's see what width, 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 the whatever uh, we uh, are gonna get. So we have here. Okay. Yeah, obviously this steering rack is too wide. This guy is too wide. But this is not a problem. This is not a problem. I think. Ideally it would be uh, this. But we are going to make it... Yeah. One, two. No, wait. Wait, one. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. 
yeah, yeah. It's not a problem because we are gonna simply gonna use um, its properties as they are. I'm gonna use this mounting this guy here suddenly in front yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah this should be perfect i mean perfect you know perfect is a very very loose term but the way i uh, see this this is gonna be just fine and yeah perfectly in the middle yeah that's how we that's how we uh how we're gonna do this and we're gonna use this for as a an, as an additional guide and uh, the steering rack here is going to be uh, held up uh, by, you know, a tab here. So it, it won't um, be pushed up. So we can have a, the, the minimal amount of support of the steering rack that's possible uh, without, without compromising its function. Uh, so that it's... You know, it's basically the steering rack is just makes the suspension bridge uh, two studs uh, high, and everything above it is completely free to do whatever we want. Since uh, you know the cardan for the um, steering rack is here, the cardan for the steering rack. Is here and it goes directly you know to the um, to the steering rack so it goes out of the way of whatever is gonna be here uh, immediately making a lot of room for whatever we want and on the other side of this is gonna be the other rack so the other axle that goes uh, along um, which is gonna be the hand of God steering. So we have um, the, the the steering wheel and the hand of God steering here, just uh, a few studs apart, and that's it. That's all the steering. Everything else is gonna be a huge empty space between the the suspension struts, where we can put in whatever we like. Uh, maybe even you know. I'm just going on a limp here because the engine bay is gonna be um, long enough. And hear me out here. Uh, there could be room for a small cylinder uh, LP power V8. Think about that. Uh, there is room. Since the engine bay is gonna be 20 studs long and the uh, uh, engine would be only 15 studs long. And since the width is enough, and the small cylinder engine would be low enough, there is a possibility to mount an LP power small cylinder V8 engine. Keep that in mind. That's one of the options. Uh, uh, McPherson uh, suspension cars are perfect for that. Uh, what did you say? What the fuck? Let me read that. You've been busy. Uh... Oh, Leon, this is... you don't have to apologize. I mean, it's the streams are for you to enjoy. Not there. It's you're not obligated to watch them. Uh...
you know, there's enough room here to make an engine, an, an, a pneumatic engine, you know. Um, there's no, uh, a turbo uh, pneumatic engine is not possible. Okay. This is not possible to do because uh, pneumatic engines like steam engines work on a completely different principle than uh, internal combustion engines. So read it up, it's not possible. There's several options uh, of what the engine can be. Of course, if we want to do um, like drifting in the snow, it would have to be batteries. So electric motors and batteries. But of course, for uh, for for the technical uh, geeks in us, uh, a pneumatic engine is, of course, the option. And uh, the way I see it, the Sierra would, because of its big engine bay, uh, would be the perfect uh, successor to the LP Power Mustang, since the LP Power Mustang. Uh, so far was the uh, basically the mule for for testing engines because it had the the big engine bay of course but since this engine bay is gonna be pretty big to be honest um, it's probably gonna be um, suitable you know for 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 as, a, as an engine test bed uh one of the things that we can uh test in here as well is the engine bay uh, is the engine uh, of the chiron when we get to it of course uh we can load the engine bay with the uh, buggy motors uh, since i think they are going to be just you know tall enough that the hood is gonna clear them or if not we just gonna omit the hood um and uh, we can see how fast the car goes, you know, with the, uh, with the, since the wheels are going to be the same size, um, the ratio in the differential can be adjusted to be the same and all of that. We can have the, the Sierra as a, you know, a test bed for, for that. So I'm, I'm really happy that we decided on the Sierra because with the Audi, this wouldn't be possible, but with the Sierra, it's going to be possible. So. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, if you can't tell, I am. Um, okay. Um, what we need to do here? Obviously, uh, we need to do the other uh, strut. But first and foremost, uh, we need to to have the uh, suspension towers as far out as possible. Of course, here we have uh, a lot of potential. We need to push this at least one stud further out so that we have as much room between the struts as possible. You know, we of course, the, the limit, of course, is this. And this is exactly where we are going to position it. Uh, this is the, the, loca the, the vertical location of our suspension strut. And of course, uh, we need to determine where the um, where the uh, frame rails are gonna be. But the frame rails are so low in the engine bay that they are not the limiting factor of the width of the engine bay. The limiting factor in in this setup are the struts. So the strut towers uh, is where the width of our engine bay is determined. Okay, um, so let's find a solution for this first, um, because this is then gonna decide how how we are gonna build the frameworks and everything else. Uh, I'm gonna leave um, this as it is, and I'm gonna take the other uh, spring, and we're gonna experiment on the other spring. Just let me find where I put it. There it is. Uh, 
There it is. Okay. Yeah, see, I on this one I have not cut off the the what what are these? I don't know why they they even I don't know why they are even there. So I don't need these here. They are just limiting us. Uh, by the way, now. Uh, if you like uh, the channel, of course, uh, do consider uh, supporting me on Patreon, since uh, you know Lego is expensive. Uh, all of this costs money, uh, and um, you know future projects and this project, uh, pro this project is uh, gonna be financed uh, partly from your donations because you know. Uh, my salary isn't uh, that huge and um, the more money we get uh, the faster we can do this because there will be a, a point where um, what we do here is gonna come to a halt simply because I will not able to afford the parts right now with the charger I had most parts in stock at home but with the Sierra, there will be, we, we are gonna have to uh, buy parts that uh, I don't have. You know, for example, the, the limitations, of course, here will be what color parts we can get. So, what color the car will be. Uh, I hope it's not going to be orange. My wish would be white, I guess. I think we could get white parts. I don't know. But anyway, we would have to, I, I mean, I would have to buy all the parts and, you know, Lego is not cheap. Um, so, yeah, if anybody of you who enjoys this channel could support me, that would be grand. Anyway, uh, shameful, uh, shameless um, uh Patreon support uh, part over. Uh, so let's um, let's design this. Okay. First thing, what we would do. Uh, uh, this guy is gonna be reversed. So the top part here is gonna be on, on the bottom. So it's not gonna affect anything major. Just that the heavy part is gonna be you know down below. So we're gonna uh, turn this around and design. Uh, the top part with, with it being like this. When I rebuild this, uh, when I build the other one, I'm gonna, you know, change it. Uh, I do not sell modified valves anymore. Simply because it's too much work and I basically don't earn anything. Um, or very little. I mean, for the time I have to spend uh, modifying them. Um, okay, so ideally, um, oh, Ralph, Ralph's uh, gone, yeah, uh, see, see you, Ralph. Um, so. Ideally, we would have uh, this guy in here, but we're not. I mean, we there's there's no realistic way of us fitting in here. Um, you need six. I don't even have six valves at, at home. Yeah, okay. I mean, we can we can make. Uh, I can make you six uh, valves. Yeah, I mean. I um, will have to order some stuff from Bricklink anyway. I can as well uh, order six valves. Six. What's wrong with me today? I can order six valves for you and uh, make them. But I'm not selling them uh, on the page because I got requests to do. I don't know. At one point, I had like uh, 30 or more valves to do. It was, I mean, I spent hours doing just valves. It was 
a lot of time for basically earning like I don't know, two euro on 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 a valve. It my time is more valuable than that, so I I said no, I I'm not uh, selling valves anymore. Cylinders, yeah, cil make modifying cylinders is is not time consuming, but valves is a different matter. Um, if I know about Bad Obsession Motorsports, absolutely. I religiously uh, watch every single episode they do. They are absolutely epic. I adore them. Um, okay. So we need to retain our uh, 7 uh, degree angle here. Uh, what we want to do here uh, is we want to shave this uh, edge off, you know, because uh, as I said before, the the hood is gonna gonna go here. The hood is gonna go here, and uh, we do not want this here. Um, and at the same time, we want everything to be two studs further here. So ideally, our our strut tower is gonna gonna be here and there's another complication as if any as if it's not complicated enough I want this to be easily removable so ideally here as, as you can see we have uh, an axle uh, for a purpose uh, and I want this to be easily removable so one way of this being easily removable is to have an axle go through and we can just slide the axle out. And this way, uh, just uh, it's the same uh, attachment principle that I had on the E30. So this way you just slide the pin out and the whole strut drops out and you can change it. Uh, and believe me, we want this to be changeable. This is not uh, a Lego model where everything is so tightly built in that if you want to change anything, you have to disassemble most of the model. Uh, no, 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 we are not going to build their Mini. Uh, then I, I would rather build uh, a Celica, the whole, the whole car, you know. Uh, and I would build the... The model from I think it was 1990, 1991, the one with the pop-up headlights. That's my favorite one. Uh, but no, we're not. Uh, we're not doing that. The Sierra is gonna be just fine. Trust me. Um. Okay. How do we approach this? So obviously some stuff here is going to be, well, movable, like um, this part here in front, I th think we can, we can get away with, mm, come on. Get, get away with it being this part. No. This part? No, like this. So, I think, I think it could be like this. But I'm not sure. No. Is it? Come on. Sorry, you you cannot see what I'm seeing. Uh, just, I think it would be. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe if if we have this here. 
the angle would be just right. Maybe. We won't know before we build it. Um, well, I, I'm for you, I'm going to make a special price. I'm, I need to see for how much I can buy them. And then on top of my buying price, uh, I'm going to charge you, I don't know, two euros per, per uh, switch to uh, modify, I don't know, something like that. Uh, nothing earth, earth, nothing earth shattering. I think usually the, the, the valves go for, I don't know, anything from one and a half euros to three euros, depending on where I buy them, uh, including, of course, shipping, I don't know, something like that. I need to check. I need to check. Um, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. However, um, yeah, since I want this to be like that, I think two, yeah, two euro extra per, uh, uh on top of what the, the, the parts actually cost me to buy, you know, I, I don't think that's too much. I hope so. Well. Okay. Um, let me think. So, we are gonna have to have the, at least the top of it will have to be three studs. I mean three studs. It's gonna have to be like this. But I want this part to be less. Uh, I think I even sold them for five euros on the LP power page before I put them... Uh, I, I, before I stop, uh, stop selling them. Um, Okay, so the top part is gonna be the, part, the top part is gonna be uh, up until here, but I really want at least this part here not to be present because if we do make a V engine, uh, the V is gonna be as close to the strut as possible. So I want the strut to be. As, as minimally intrusive as possible. So, is there a chance that we can use this in any capacity? No. No, we're going to use this. Um, we're not gonna use this. Okay. Since we're not gonna use this, oh, uh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna go back, get back to you uh, tomorrow uh, when I. Uh, see how much they even go for on bricking um i have i have no i have it's been a while since i bought uh the valves and the price may have gone up i don't know um let me now concentrate okay so since i want this to make to be as minim minimal as possible, you know, so that we don't have get a bump here. Um, we are also, of course, gonna use this, so that this is the only thing that that goes beyond the strut. And you know, we are gonna 
mount it like here and of course the, the height is going to be different height is going to be different mm -hmm. okay so if we want to retain this now i have to make myself uh, a template now i have to make myself a template uh, with this lower it and then sorry i'm i'm just uh, i'm brainstorming here uh a template we said okay important stuff so one two three four so it, this is four okay four studs Here, and then one and two. I made myself a template. Now I know where the parts need to be, and not, and, and of course the the angle. Now I can ha I can make uh, I can make my equivalent on the other side, but I'm gonna make it one step lower, just because you know reasons. Because reasons. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I know. I know about. Uh, the, you know. You. You mean the. Uh, white and green one, the white and green uh, Lego Technic uh, 24, 24 hour race car. Okay. I know if it. What's. What about it? Okay, so this is less than ideal already, since I would like this to be without bushings. Well, maybe we can do this without bushings like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's yeah, it's in the same plane. Okay, now we just need to make an attachment here. And then it's just a matter of height. See, if I do this, our uh, shock, our, so our strut, is pretty much where this is. I mean, this millimeter doesn't really count. Um, and yeah, okay. And of course, in the end, we'll see wh where we get here. But... I want to, to now see what can be done here. Ideally, if we are lucky, if we are lucky, 
the geometry gods are gonna agree with us and we can do the following if we're not lucky well fuck it but i hope we're lucky yeah not quite not quite what i wanted okay so we're not that lucky never taking it apart again why uh, you rebuilt it how uh, better or the same as uh, as how lego did it because uh, my uh, opinion about that uh, particular uh, uh, model is not very high not that uh, you probably you probably didn't want to hear it but you know that's what i think about it or i don't think anything good about that particular car especially not because they reused the very same suspension from that uh, uh, 24 hour race car was used in the GT3 Porsche that they did. The very same suspension was used in it. So, how are we supposed to win here? How are we supposed to win? Mm -hmm. No. Well, shit. Hmm. All right. You you built. Uh, you didn't buy the car as, as such, but you uh, bought all the pieces from Bricklink and you built it like that. Yeah, let's see. Thing is, um, yeah, I'm just gonna use this. You know, so that I, um, there, so that I can uh, just compare. Yeah. So these are identical. Yeah, just like I said, like you said. But you know what I want? Ideally. Oh, you bought a set. Okay. Uh, ideally, I would want. Um, I would want this to be, you know, as small as possible, so that you know I would have something here, mounting it. But I guess that's not gonna happen. 
and uh, ideally I would have have it like this so that I just pull out um, the axle and this goes out without anything else falling out you know that would be my dream if you want to say if, if you uh, if we're talking about it mm. What you have, you have two Unimox. Why? It's, I mean, it's, it's an okay set if you use my front suspension, but it's not that great. Um, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, um, oh, yeah, that doesn't work. But this. This doesn't work because of that. Yeah, I think need to be. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not not truly. Really, I mean. The Unimog looks good. I like the way it looks. I like, uh, I mean, I'm biased because I like the old Unimog, the red one. It's uh, from 1980. It's the set, um, what's the set number? Uh, 8850 zero, zero or some, I don't know. I, I, I have it. It, it's uh, the old red Unimog from 1980. I love that set. Um, it's simple, but it's it does not really have any flaws for what it is. Um, and I, I looked forward to the new Unimog, only to be disappointed by its suspension. And, of course, all of the things LEGO did with it. Uh, it could have been so much better. Uh, I mean, the way everything is built into the uh, chassis, I mean, you it's so hard to modify anything. It's typical Lego. These? I don't know. I bought them a long time ago. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. They were expensive even back then. I, I think I paid 15 euros for for one or something like that. I just had to have them because you never know when they come handy. But um, yeah. Mm, how do we do this? This. 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 Okay. Uh, we can do the following. Um, we can do it like this. Let's see. Is this? Ah, oh, yeah. Geometry wise, we need to do this. Do we? One, two. One, 
two, three. Ah, wait. Yeah, half a, the half a stud is fucking me up. Yeah, need half a stud. Okay, so we need half a stud. So we need. I'm gonna use. Yeah, Lego, I mean, I I don't really understand, I mean, I do understand it, of course, I mean, it's all about profit, but uh, still I think um, Lego should reconsider what it's doing. I mean, it's literally um, screwing its fans, and I think that's not okay. Okay. So this is a very tight fit. Very tight fit. Not perfectly geometry wise. I see here. It does fit if you if you force it a little bit. One good thing about forcing it a little bit is that it's really tight. It's really tight. And the way this is positioned, you know, the axle cannot flex, which is good. Because when the axle, I mean, it, it does flex here, you see? When I press, I can see a little bit of flexing here. Here, it bulges a little bit. Maybe it, you can you maybe you cannot see it on camera because my hand is moving. I can see it just a little bit, but nothing major. We can go with it. Uh, I don't like this because I then have to you know when I remove this. Then this falls apart, and now when I put the when I put the strut back together, I have to put this in there as well. You know, it's just a hassle. Ideally, I would not have to put this in. I'm certain that now that we do have this established, I can find a way of uh, not doing this. And I'm gonna find a way, trust me. Um, Axel to axel connector in between. Uh, yeah, but it it doesn't right. JSP, you are a genius. Of course, I mean, ah, of course, I'm. Yes, that's absolutely yes. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, that's that solves it basically. Um, that solves it uh, when it creates a, a problem it does create a problem um, but this problem may not really be a problem I, it, it may just be my fear of uh, things happening I'll, ex I'll explain in just a second um, so, okay, so you see, now we can just pull this out and the whole thing drops, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, there's no hassle with parts. 
uh, the, my only concern is that this may be uh, too high uh, for the hood. But we can deal with this later. You know, we can deal with this or in the, you know, we can use the, we can create the hood. So um, this part actually, uh, you know, it, it's in here. It's in here and then it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna uh, be a problem. Okay. Yeah. So pull it out like we have, I had in uh, E30 and I can remove the whole suspension immediately. And then I basically put it back in, you know, like that. That's it. And this it doesn't even bulge uh, too, too much or at all. Uh, so, uh, no. I cannot use anything 3-pin here without uh, not being able to remove it. See, 1, 2, 3. So, if I, I can use... Uh, the brown uh, axle in here, the brown with uh, you know the br brown three pin uh, three stud axle here, but then I cannot remove it. So we're gonna make this work. Don't worry. I'm happy with this. You know, it's gonna be fine. And of course, here on top of it, we can then make uh, a connection. Uh, you know, on top of this, we can make then a connection to the outer frame rail without a problem because uh, obviously uh, this is gonna be high enough. And of course, um, the obligatory uh, strut brace. That's probably gonna happen because uh, what you get in in the real car, and you you, I mean, we are gonna get this in Lego as well, is that when you compress the strut. Uh, what it tends to do is, you see, the it pushes the strut inwards. Uh, we'll see how much of a problem this is because uh, we are going to, of course, brace the the strut tower to the outer frame rail, which is gonna mitigate uh, a lot of this. Uh, but still, you know, for the for that uh, final uh, stiffness, a strut brace over the engine is gonna happen basically we'll see okay so um, I think uh, we have gone we have come far today um, so in the next stream um, the next stream we are going to uh, make the whole suspension bridge with the uh, frame rails. Uh, so this 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 is what we are gonna be uh, left with uh, at the next uh, in the next stream. So both both strut towers, uh, the steering rack, uh, both uh, struts, and uh, frame rails. Uh, well, the models of the frame rails. We'll see how it pans out. Um, and um, yeah gonna be interesting so next time we can we're gonna have the full front suspension here um, well the yellow ones so uh, it's basically one stud shorter the yellow ones than this but this is easier to mount and it's I think we should go with this uh, I also thought about making it stiffer for example if we discover that they are not stiff enough we can put additional springs in here so we take it apart and we put additional springs in here I think this should be doable I forgot how this is made um, so yeah uh, well, the next stream is 
on Monday, as usual. Uh, oh, you mean the, sp the yellow spring ones? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, the yellow springs are two studs shorter. But of course, with the yellow springs, you have to put uh, a ball joint here, and then, um, I don't know. Or, or you can of course, uh, you can of course use uh, something like this, you know, with uh, the turntable to make it, to make it turnable. So yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, next stream is on Monday. Uh, maybe I have I will have the time and the energy to already pre-assemble some of this, so we can save time on Monday. Because you know, mirroring this is really not something for the stream. Nobody is interested in this. Um, and yeah, um, well, another. As I said, uh, if you enjoy the streams, uh, consider supporting me at pa on Patreon. I don't know, three euros per month. I don't know. Will bring us uh, a long way uh, with time. Um, yeah, uh, subscribe uh, to my social media. You know, I use regularly post stuff like this uh, there. Um, like my Facebook page, the LPA Power Facebook page, um, and I see you in the next stream. So thanks for watching, and I see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend.